Welcome to the Geometry Notes Super Beginners course. In this first video we will cover what exactly Geometry Notes are and starting to use them on an example while explaining the methods used. So just a quick summary, what are Geometry Notes? Basically Geometry Notes are custom self-built modifier which you can apply on objects like mesh objects and curves. As you can see here I just select my modifiers and I have my geometry nodes modifier. So in general, it's just a modifier like every other modifier. But this modifier is pretty special because it's a powerful tool for creating, manipulating and modifying geometry using a node-based interface. I can show you that in a second. For that, I just open another window, change it to the geometry node editor. And here you can see what is happening inside of that yeah, custom self-built modifier. If I click new here or here, I can just create a new modifier here, a new geometry nodes group, and then you can see how these nodes are looking. These nodes are little programs or mathematical functions, which for example, calculate something to change the geometry data. The very big advantage of using this is the non-destructive workflow because they allow for non-destructive editing, meaning you can make changes to your geometry without altering the original mesh data. You can see that here, I have my group input node and my group input geometry is here along this string to the group output geometry. So the flow is basically from left to right here. And this means here my geometry input, here the input comes into my modifier, then here I can make some changes, modifying the geometry in some way, and then my output geometry will look different. And now the nice thing is I can edit this or delete this or change it at any time. So my geometry modification is always a flexible thing and nothing is fixed here. Additionally to that, geometry nodes is a modular approach of modifying a geometry, which means I can use modular little nodes, so modular little programs, and I can connect these nodes together to form a network. And each of these nodes performing a specific operation or transformation on the geometry, for example. So I can make the change one here, then I can make a change two here. Then for example, I can split this up to change three and four. And then at the end, they influence each other to the change five and then in the end this will be my output geometry and I can exchange and modify every single one of these little changes at any time. So you can modularly build this network or node tree together. So you basically use mathematical operations to calculate the geometry with the nodes and create certain effects and animations. A little example here, for example with functions like the sine function which looks like this here. You can just put in the x value, which basically is the flow in this direction here, as an input and in return you will get the y output. So you put in x, which are values from 0, 1, 2 and so on to 10. You just put in these values, for example, an animated value which just counts up one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And the return of that function here will basically a fl will be a fluctuating output which goes from minus one to one. So basically you input a counting value which counts up, one, two, three, four, five, and you will get a, get a value which counts from minus one to one and then back to minus one. So basically a value which will move up and down from these two values here. And we can use this behavior here to, for example, animate something which has to move back and forth or swing back and forth, for example, because you can imagine if I have now a value which fluctuates between minus one and one, this would be pretty handy to use to animate something swinging because something, something swinging moves from one point to another point and then back to the old point. So, and because of this behavior, we can very comfortably use 
this sine graph to animate, for example, something swinging. We will come to that in a second. Because you can already see here another big advantage of using geometry nodes, because it is a procedural generation here or a procedural animation. Procedural animation or generation basically means that you build a system where we can use some quite flexible input values to create very complex output results. A very simple example here in this case would be I just use a sine graph and then I just put in an x value which just increases all the time and the output is a swinging animation. That would be a very simple example for a procedural animation but you can imagine it like this and add some complexity to it and then you can create more and more complex node trees or procedural systems to animate with math. So, and now we will come to the example. For the example, I want to create a swinging animation as already announced and I just do this with a rotation value, which will be my main swinging animation. So I will just add a node in this menu here. So I just press Shift A to open the Add menu. Just as in the normal viewport, if you hit Shift A, you can add some yeah, objects here. And in the Geometry Nodes editor, you can add nodes here. Alternatively, you can go on this Add menu, but I recommend to use the shortcut here, Shift A. And then you have a large, large, large menu with many, many nodes. But don't worry, we will just search for the nodes and then use the names to find them instantly. And the node I want to use is the transform geometry node. So you just type in transform to search for that node and then you just place it right between them and then it will automatically snap in between them connecting these strings here. This node should look familiar to you even when you haven't used the geometry nodes editor never before because it looks pretty similar to the transform window here in the object properties because it's basically the same thing. You can use this node here to transform the geometry in many different ways. For example, moving it on axis, rotating it on axis, or scaling it on axis. So as you can see, basically the same thing as you already know here in the editor. So let's put all of this back. So, and now for the procedural part, I put this a bit to the right because I have to do something here on the left. So at first we need, as you remember, because let me quickly sketch this here. If we want to use that sine graph here, we need at first a value which counts always up all the time that we run on the X axis to the right all the time. And this you can do by just adding a value node value. And this value just outputs a float value, which is a decimate number. But in this case, it's not super important. We could also use an integer node, which is similar to the value node. But as you can maybe already see, it's no decimal value. It's just a integer full number value here. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I will just go with the value node. And here I just want to click inside of that value and you could type in any value here or slide here to increase or decrease the value. But we want to use a driver for this, which will control this little slider for us. And if you just type in hashtag frame and hit enter, then this little slider will always display the current frame on the timeline. So if I slide here, left and right, you can see this number will always represent the current frame. And if I hit play, it doesn't update so fast. So but if I move my cursor here, you can see it, it's basically counting up. And that's what we need. Let me just increase the end here to 10,000 that we don't run out of time here in the timeline. But if I now hit play, you can see it just counts up. That's what we need for our swinging animation. And now it's pretty easy because we basically only have to use a math node. And this math node is very flexible. You can use it for many, many different mathematical operations. Every operation you know is listed here, I think. And for example, in this case, we want to use the trigonometric 
function sign here, which looks exactly like this here, and then just use the counting up value for the input here. And now the output here will be a fluctuating y value between minus one and one. Oops, that, let me fix that here. So now it doesn't disappear. So from minus one and one, and we just want to use this as a rotation here, but we have an issue because the output here is a float value, just like this one, a decimal value, a single decimal value. And here, this is a vector input, which are three different values, X, Y, and Z. Here, all of the, these have the same input here, a vector. So we just have to convert this single value into a vector and we're just gonna do that by combine x, y, z, because here we can just use three different values to combine them into a vector. And here, for example, let's use the y here, which is the green axis for our axis of choice, and then connect the vector to the rotation. And then already happened something here, I hit play, and you can see it's rotating somehow, but it's extremely fast. And that's why the number here is just super fast counting up. But that's not an issue. We will just use another math node here in between here to multiply this by 0 0.1, for example. And then the value will be 10 times smaller. Alternatively, you could divide it by 10 would be exactly the same thing. So it doesn't matter what you do here. You just have to bring the values down here. So basically a 383 value will then be here a yeah 38.3 and that's way smaller. And if I hit play now, you can see something is swinging here now. And that's now basically the example I was talking about. So let me quickly summarize this. So we basically used a value here, which counts up all the time then divided that value by 10 to make it a bit smaller and not super fast and then use this for the sign input which is here this graph so we basically have our value running from left to right here and this results then in a value going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down from minus one to one because we're using a sign graph for the function here to use and then we'll just use the output, this fluctuating output here, we'll use this on a y axis to combine a vector, which is then zero, then whatever the sign output is, and zero on the z axis, which basically means it's only rotating then on the y axis here. And then you use this here for the rotation vector for a transform geometry which is pretty similar to this. As you can see, if I dial here on the right, it looks the same. So, and if I hit play now, you can see that it just swings back and forth, left and right, because that's the Y output of the sign graph used as a rotation value on the Y axis. And for example, to make it a bit better looking, we could make this a bit smaller, a bit longer here, and then move it down a bit in the edit mode that this element has the pivot point here at the top. And if I now hit play, you have this element swinging from left to right. And that's basically now your first geometry nodes procedural animation, only calculated with math, without any keyframes or whatever, just a running value from zero all the way to 10,000. And we'll use this value now to make the swing with a sine graph. So as you can see, not extremely complex, of course it can get very complex, but the whole idea behind it is not very complex. We just use math to animate things basically, or build a geometry. Of course, it was a quite easy example, but now maybe I hope I demystified the geometry nodes process a bit for you as a beginner, because you don't have to be worried or whatever it's super easy you just have to get into it learn a little bit of math and then you can nail basically every animation you want to do procedurally 
So this was the first video of the Geometry Notes Super Beginners course. I hope you learned a lot and I'm sure you won't be a super beginner for much longer. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to never miss a lesson and see you in the next one.